Hey everybody, this is Andrew Isley. Thanks for checking out this tutorial on mixing tips. Uh, as you can see, we're getting close to the end of our, uh, of our session here. Um, in the last tutorial, we looked at just the real basic uh, preliminary uh, arrangement. Um, this one's a, a little bit more fleshed out. Actually, this is pretty much the finished track. Uh, this includes all of the uh, mixing and effects automation and the um, the mastering uh, suite uh, setup, which we'll take a look at uh, in the next couple of tutorials. Uh, but what what I want to talk about is some some mixing tips. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to the track, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, what's going on. Uh, let me just get back to the beginning. So straight away, you can hear that I've added uh, a big reverb to that Japan pluck instrument. Um, the reverbs that I have, uh, I have three different effects that are on the uh, aux ends on our 14 channel mixer. First one, which is called Kick Bomb, which is uh, an RV7000. It's a big long reverb. Next is a digital delay. It's a 1-6 delay, which we won't hear until the breakdown in the middle. And then the third one, which is this space echo. Um, You'll see that um, I've routed the clap separately onto its own track, and uh, you can see I'm automating the uh, Oxen 3 every so often to get sort of that delayed clap sound. So coming up is uh, an effects breakdown. There you can hear the one six delay. And towards the end of that, you'll hear a drum roll that sort of fades up. Incidentally, I kept that 1-6 delay up running through the rest of the song. We've also added this Cajon uh, percussion track. There's two different patterns that are playing. This was done from the Dr. Octorex. I just copied two different patterns to the track, um, which are good for different parts of the song. There you can see the automation. talk about automation in the next video. And that about uh, wraps it up. So let's talk a little bit about uh, mixing and things to keep in mind when you're starting off with your mix. Uh, the most difficult thing is to get your your low end frequencies uh, working together correctly. Um, too much bass. Uh, if you have too much bass within your song, it's really what clouds up the mix. What, what gives it uh, what people call muddy, uh, where things aren't very clear and defined. So we want a really well defined, clear bass. And really, the only way to do that is to pick where your bass comes from. Uh, in this particular track. Um, that we're, that we're working on here. It is our sub bass, which is this resin bass, and uh, also the kick drum, which is routed over here. I'm gonna go ahead and solo those so we can listen to them together. Um, this is the resin bass, and then this is the, the low kick.
Yeah, it's always difficult getting your low end to sit right. So these are the these are really the only instruments that I have that should be adding uh, low frequency. When I say low, I'm talking anything below like 100 hertz. Um, everything else I'm basically rolling off of, uh, either by cutting it using the shelf EQs or maybe using uh, an equalizer down here. Here you can see I cut a little bit out of the low kick um, so that the sub bass can come through. There's a, probably there's an EQ on uh, the sub bass as well. Um, kind of hard to see, but the uh, I talk about this in the book um, in terms of getting the frequencies to sit right. Sort of, uh, you can boost uh, frequency and sweep around until you you find its sort of resonance where it's really really peeking through, and and uh, you can cut a little bit out of it, um, basically notching out little pockets for each instrument so they'll they'll sit correctly. But like I said, the rest of the instruments in here, like if you look here, this is our fifth triggers. This is that. Uh, arpeggiated track that we play every so often. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, solo it. I'll take off the bass, the EQ, so you can really hear it. it it's kind of subtle, but that's with it off. So you can hear it. it's taken out some of that percussion, some of that there's a little bit of a clickiness to it, but it's it's uh, even the smallest amount of bass. If you think about it, if you had 24 tracks and they're all adding just a tiny little amount, that adds up over time. Uh, so it will affect um, the clarity of of your sub bass and your kick drum. So those are the the most uh, important things and most difficult things to work on. Uh, other things that we have in here, we have uh, our compressor. Uh, compressors are great for making louder sounds softer and softer sounds louder. Um, just remember when you're uh, when you're dealing with a, a compressor, it's um, I'm always a big fan of less is more unless you're going for a, a particular special effect kind of thing. Um, other things in here that we can look at uh, the um, the effects that I have on uh, all of the, the breakdown effects. Uh, so looking at that section of our song, you'll see. In order to really give them their maximum effects, it's these tracks in here. I'm using a lot of uh, different reverbs and delays pretty much all of it. One of my favorite ones is the um, symbol effect. It's basically a bowed symbol. That's a good example of it right there. So there's our clap. If I bypass the compressor, you can see it doesn't have nearly the same kind of presence. You could increase the volume, but this kind of thickens it up a little bit. And again, I'm using a small amount there. But uh, in the book, we talk about uh, compression and how to use it, how to set it up. So uh, that about wraps up this uh, video on the mixing tips. Hopefully uh, you'll be able to get your low end in order and uh, maximize your tracks, getting them to sound as good as possible. So in our next video, let's take a look at some automation, uh, which we added to this track. Um, we'll take a look at how easy that is and uh, 
yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching.